Hey YouTube, I am in my kitchen today because we are filming a video about polishing silver. I bought an entire box of really heavily tarnished silver at an auction. Nobody else seemed to really want it. Um, so there are probably close to a hundred pieces of silver in here. Uh, the reasons I would not want to polish a hundred pieces of silver, the time it would take is not worth, um, the investment. I could be doing a hundred other things for my reselling business. And then also have you ever polished silver with, um, chemical or commercial cleaners? They stink. Leaves my house smelling like rotten eggs. So I'm going to show you a quick fast method. Now my goal is not to get this silver shiny. It's to get it looking better. So I I can hopefully make a bit more money than selling this tarnished mess. Let's see what we need today. You're going to need a towel that is um, not a keeper for you. You can see I've already used this towel for this method, and this is what it does to it. There's tarnish all over this towel, so please do not use one of your good kitchen towels. I have a glass casserole dish that I have lined with aluminum foil. I have lined it all the way down tightly. Um, I'm just using great value regular aluminum foil. You could use a heavy-duty foil, and um, it won't break the foil, but this is what I have. Most of the recipes that I have seen have called for baking soda, but you can see I am out of baking soda. I am using baking powder. I've used this all day for this method. Seems to work very well. It also seems to bubble very, very well. So um, for the purposes of this video, I am using baking powder, but I will tell you, I think you're supposed to use baking soda. Haven't seen any adverse chemical reactions. Sorry, excuse my son in the background. Um, I haven't seen any adverse chemical reactions from using this. So this is what I'm, I'm using. And then I also have some water boiling over here in the kettle. We want to make sure the water is nice and hot and absolutely boiling. Um, I am going to start layering. Uh, well, I shouldn't say layering. I'm going to lay the silver in the pan here and make sure that it is um, not layered and not on top of each other. You can see this fork is probably our worst offender. Let's see how shiny we can get this thing. Again, I'm just wanting to get most of the surface tarnish, surface tarnish off of these. I'm not really aiming at them to be squeaky, squeaky clean, but I can get a lot more if some of this tarnish isn't on there. So they are all laying. Again, do not layer them on top of each other. Take the baking uh, powder, baking soda, whichever you're using, and just sprinkle that right on top. We're just going to make a layer on top. Look, it just snowed, everybody. And um, now I am going to take my oven mitt, and we'll get this boiling water. Turn off the flame here and take this boiling water. And let me actually switch hands for this. I am right-handed, and that's going to work out a lot better if I pour it with my right hand. And, guys, I'm just going to pour a layer of water. I want this silverware to actually be submerged. Um, so all of the fork tines need to completely be underwater. And you can hear... It start to bubble and then you'll see here in just a second what I was talking about with the um, fizzing and the bubbling and everything that I used baking soda until I ran out and I feel like with this baking powder it actually fizzes more so I don't know if it's more effective or if that's just you know the um, the other elements that are in baking powder that are not in baking soda there's really not that much more but there are some more things but anyway so we're gonna let this sit here um i take it you guys do not want to watch this happen for a couple minutes um if it's not as heavily tarnished as this you can honestly take it out within seconds and it's a lot cleaner but you guys saw how dirty mine is so i'm gonna pause this video we will come back and um, i'm going to move it on to this now covered in tarnished cloth and I'll just polish it real briefly with my hands. If it's still heavily soiled, then I'll show you what to do to try to get the rest of it off of there. So let's, let's let it take a bath for a minute. All right. So I have let it sit in the water for a little while. You might want to use tongs to actually pull the um, metal out of there. This was boiling water that you laid down. You could use uh, any piece of silverware that you have. Um, I'm just going to grab it with my fingers real quick. It is kind of hot and throw it over here on this towel. And then I have just kind of been buffing it. There's nothing special on this towel. This silverware sat for, I don't know, somewhere between 60 and 90 seconds. Now you can see there's still quite a bit of tarnish here on the back. I'm actually going to throw this in um, for a second bath. And then I'm going to grab, as I throw it in, I'll grab, here's our dirtiest fork. I'll grab another piece. This is the one that was nearly black when I put it in there. It 
So it's looking pretty good. We still have, like I say, some tarnish here on the back. I can actually read the name on this piece of silver now. So um, I will do the same thing. I'm going to grab a new piece. I'll go ahead and grab the other ones that haven't been taken out yet. There's one more knife in here. So the other thing, you can't really see what's in there. And I'm going to throw the pieces in for a second bath. Um, that has been proving effective for me on this method. Again, I would never want to sit and polish with a chemical cleaner 100 pieces of silver, but I can totally do this. I mean, these are looking tremendously better, wouldn't you guys agree? Um, so let's go ahead and polish these all up one last time. I will throw them all back in the bath. These knives seem to be really extra dirty. Look at this. A lot of the things from this auction were from the 40s and 50s. Some of this silverware dates back 30s and 40s for sure. This one, look at how gross that is. No one wants to buy that. See if we can make it at least more appealing to where a silver collector would want to get it and see how they can polish it up themselves. So we'll give it a second bath. I will do this to all of these items again, and then I'll show you guys the final product. Um, so all I'm going to be doing is letting them set. I might sprinkle a little bit more baking powder in here just to let it fizz a bit. And we will let it sit. I will scour them one more time and then show you guys the final results. All right, guys, it just came out of the second bath. Like I say, these aren't um, as polished as someone would want them to collect, probably, but they look a heck of a lot better, and I'm more likely to get a sale on these now um, than, than before, for sure. You can see, I mean, one of these forks was next to black, right? I think it was this one. You can still tell that it's a little bit darker, but um, a tremendously uh, better better condition now uh, to be able to sell these. Like I say, when you are dealing with a massive quantity um, of silver plated items, this is probably the better way to go. I have some uh, coffee pots and teapots that are silver plated. <laughs> Sorry, it's my kids again. That um, I may try this on a larger scale, even in the sink. I may try these in, in the sink or something like that. Um, not these, but those those pots and see what a difference I can make. But um, I hope you guys have great success with this method. And I have an entire box of silver to keep doing this with. Oh, God bless you guys. Thanks for watching. And remember, treat your business like your business.